The rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. And stepping into your screen, Andy Dalton and the Cincinnati Bengals offense as they come out and get ready to go. Last year in 2017 for Dalton, 25 touchdowns, 12 picks, fewest yards per game in his career with just 207.5. Where does he stand in your mind right now? Well, right now he's probably a middle-of-the-road quarterback, but I think he can be better than that if they surround him with better players. And remember during that playoff run, they did have those weapons, those guys he could get the ball out to on the perimeter besides A.J. Green. Right now, he's kind of a lone wolf at wide receiver. The offensive line has to be rebuilt, and that has always been a strength of Cincinnati because they've got plenty of runners. I mean, when you think about Joe Mixon, right, when you think about that crew, they can run the football, but they've got to get Andy Dalton some help. Surround him with better talent. He'll give you better numbers. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. Offense needs something here on second down. It is second and long. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Nothing there, no gain, and now they're looking at a third and 15. Third and long. What will Dalton dial up? This one complete to Giovanni Bernard. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. Nice completion there for Andy Dalton. Charles, you worked some of his games when he was at TCU. Now you've worked his games in the NFL. What progression have you seen? I've seen a guy who took over as a freshman in college and got better and better each year. Always added a little bit more to his game, got stronger. But the best part about him is he's always been accurate. Oh, that was dangerous. Throw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. Second and 10, Dalton once more. And he's gonna get this down near the 20 yard line. Dalton to Green for a Cincinnati first. I don't care who you put on him, he's gonna be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe needs some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double team him somehow. I'm gonna have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. He'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. But that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Dalton throwing on second down. That is caught inside the five. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Brandon LaFell from 19 yards away. And the Bengals take it right down and score on the opening drive. Well, that's how they end this start the game and score. And I don't know if that was scripted. Was it an audible? Or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Footing likely going to be an issue all night here on a rainy night, but this one is good. Bullock out now to kick this one away. This one taken from the seven. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. So here come the Ravens with their first look on offense. They'll be led out by their veteran quarterback, a former Blue Hen out of Delaware. It's Joe Flacco. And what a bounce back from the knee injury he suffered in the 2015 season. Not the most nimble, most mobile quarterback, but he never was. He's really a throwback to those quarterbacks who played out of the pocket in the days gone by. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. 
That's a low there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And he fires one that's intercepted. William Jackson with a pick. And he returns it into enemy territory down to the 45 yard line. Charles, we got a second here to discuss Cincinnati as their offense works their way back out there. Marvin Lewis, many thought on the way out, but now a two-year extension, and it's two straight years without them being in the playoffs after five straight in the playoffs. Were you surprised that Marvin Lewis was given the extension? I actually was because he was at the end of his contract, and I thought that that was a natural end point for he and the Bengals, especially since, as you framed it, back-to-back -back years without the playoffs, back-to-back -back years of seven and nine. But getting the two-year extension tells me they're ready to rebuild. Retool this team. They've got to get better in the offensive line. They've got to get better skill position players. The defense is going to undergo, undergo some uh, more construction now. Got a new defensive coordinator coming in. So the coaching staff, players, a rebuild in Cincinnati, and they think Martin Lewis is the guy to guide them. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and they've got it back to third and ten. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Now the Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third down. Could be a blitzer. From midfield here, Dalton. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. On first, they go right back to Collins. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And it'll be second and 12. There is no doubt that Geno Atkins is really strong and stout at the point of attack. But I love this. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Preston Brown in there to sack him for a loss of six. Well, that was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Flacco and the Ravens now after the sack need something good here on third and long. Flacco from the gun. He's going to let this one go deep. And that will fall incomplete. Oh, they took a shot there on what will turn out to be the final play. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Alex Erickson deep for Cincinnati. And taken right at the 35. And he is knocked down from the side. A nice job on the return there. 16 yards. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Going to give this time to the tailback. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. Well, you had to punt on your first drive. And on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Got his man. It's Eifert. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. 
This is going to get him a first down. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. They'll run it now out of the gun. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 17 and a Cincinnati first down. That's another nice run, and I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. But other coaches said, you know something? Until they stop him, that big boy's going to keep getting the football. And that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. Brandon LaFell is intended target, and now it's second down. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Four yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up fourth down. will put this one through and the lead moves to 10 zip so give them three there a good drive gets them inside the five but they couldn't punch it in this defense too that was the old bend but don't break approach but it kept the offense out of the end zone after the field goal now it's bullock to kick it away Be taken in the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as down at the 21 yard line. The Ravens offense set and head back to the field. And it's been a run for them thus far. They had the turnover on those first two drives. So there is optimism. Turnover, you just noted it. Punt's better. The punt is better on the second one. Now they're hoping to turn into first and hopefully points. Ravens get a new set of down on that pickup. And that's something that's been in the game the last few seasons, the ability to a big run. Just run was just 41 yards, and four yards per carry near the bottom of the league. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning the game, point of attack. The offensive line is just getting pulled down. I think now, caller, you got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe they're rough you a little bit with the pass, but you've gotten confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. Well, sometimes those really come true, don't bell. It takes all 11 to play good defense. We've seen this ball game. I think the secondary can go down them. They are in the present. Every receiver, whenever the ball swings, another incompletion. All 11 there as he tucked and ran, but still short of the marker at its fourth. Partner as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. On the sneak, here's Flacco. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. Only a yard there on the keeper, but that's all he needed. First down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. We're just two minutes away from sending you to Orlando for Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report, so don't forget about that coming up shortly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a halftime without him, and we thank him for doing the highlights. Let's go get a snack. It's a four-yard pickup, and just like that, it's third down.
Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. I think he's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. And the punt team on now as this one set away. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's been effective so far over the 40-yard mark here in the second quarter. Don't forget about those guys up front, though. They've been effective, too. The leverage game has been in their favor. They've been the ones who have been able to bend their knees, drop their hips, and get a little bit lower than the guys <laughs> on the other side of the football. And they've moved them out of the way for the runner. Sometimes that's tough for those big fellas. Not an easy thing for them to do. Play fake. Here's Dalton. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe-tap sequence, right? I was ready to call him tippy-toes if that one was completed. Third down. A shot here for Dalton. He's got his man here. It's green. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. The connection since 2011, Dalton to Green for a Bengal first down. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys in plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an error in the game. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Terrell Suggs coming in from that outside linebacker spot to bury him for a loss of seven. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. And he goes out of bounds across the 40-yard line. 14 yards there on the pickup, and that's going to lead to a third down. It seemed like the situation was second and a mile to go for a first down, which screams what? Throw the football. You got to pass in order to try and pick up that kind of yardage. But in this case, they ran a tendency breaker because the tendency is for defenses to be out there and be set up for a pass. So you break tendency and actually run the football. That changes everything because if you're able to find a crease, you often have bigger guys working against smaller guys downfield. They picked up excellent yardage there to bring up a third down. To throw here, Dalton. And he's got some space here. Look at this spin. Balance. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. The first down throw coming for Dalton. It gets by him, and now a little daylight. And down inside the 15 he goes. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Dalton operating in the red zone now. And he's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. Tyler Eifert in the final seconds of the first half. And the Bengals add on to their lead. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. Now Bullock to add the extra point. He's got it and it's 17-0. out now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line.
Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Barring a flag, final play here for Flacco and company. Escaping the pressure right. And now he'll turn and off his back foot, he'll heave this deep. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Okay, so Larry apparently giving us the silent treatment all of a sudden, and we're going to skip ahead to quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll probably wish he'd reconsidered here. It will cost him 10 yards as he's down at the 15. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? Takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off around the 27. They had something going there to break that goose egg here in the second half, but to no avail. Hope was alive until that interception. What a terrific play, taking the ball away after it looked like they were starting a drive. And now that shutout still standing. You know that's something those defensive guys hold a lot of pride on, too. No doubt about it. They're excited about where they are in this game. And they'll get him to the ground, but he got all the way down to the 30-yard line. A really good pickup of 28 yards. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can right foot in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. That is caught right at the 10 yard line. And he doesn't quite make it. They do stop him. But he gets it all the way down to the one. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And now a first down following that long game. They'll come out in the pistol. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. Looking for Boyd, and he's got him. Touchdown, Bengals. Tyler Boyd from a yard. Thanks to the interception, the Bengals offense cashes in with six. And he's able to put it through. Bullock out now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. And the Ravens taking the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. A very solid gain of 27. 
Well, they've been struggling in the passing game. Do you like the aggressiveness there? I mean, it worked on that play, but do you like it? I do because a lot of the time you're struggling because your passing lanes are clogged. That usually happens when you're throwing the ball underneath. People start to press up on you, push them deep, find some space, and open things up again. Being aggressive there, I think, will pay off for them. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw. Unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. So here we go. First and ten now. Once more, it's Flacco. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Geno Atkins busting through to get him for a loss of six. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, They'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's really a difficult task. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. The swing pass caught, and he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. John Brown, 31 yards. And the Ravens get a bit closer. And that time, he came out of the slot for that big play downfield for the score. I think what we just saw there, partner, was what we call scheming a guy open. Put him in the slot, know that he has tremendous speed. What you're doing with your other receivers is likely running shorter routes to draw the attention closer to the line of scrimmage to give him a chance to get downfield and turn it into a one-on-one -on -one route, often against the safety. You like your odds when he's running against the safety. His speed usually wins, and it did on that play. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. This is sort of what you would call the put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. Still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? There are so many things to watch for when you play defense and reading your keys. You always hear about that and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Now a handoff here to his running back. And a pretty good run there as he gets seven down to the 33. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Dalton now to pass. And that one incomplete. They try to sneak in a deep ball with the clock running down. But to no avail. Now the Bengals on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This time it's third and three. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. And that's complete to LaFell. And he is out of bounds, but not before taking this down to the eight. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. But probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you've got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line call it a gain of five and that'll bring up a second and goal
And he'll give it here to his running back. And he is in. Touchdown, Bengals. A great effort there. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. Could not block that one any better. Everyone was accounted for. And a great surge by the offensive line. Bullock out now to kick this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they got something going, and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense, or are you just focused on this drive? It, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't scoreboard watch. Everyone does it to some extent. But you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That'll take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Carlos Dunlap in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sorted back its head. <laughs> Looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes. So difficult to cover. Throwing here on first down. Flacco. Now a hit. And Flacco drops the football. It's loose. And a little bit of good fortune there. He wasn't able to get it back, but he did have a teammate on the spot able to retain possession for them. Second down, Flacco now. 23 yards on the play. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. On first down, Flacco. Buying time to his left. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. First and 10 here for Flacco. Got a man. It's caught for a Ravens touchdown. All the receivers in the league are plenty good enough. Otherwise, they wouldn't make it in the NFL. But the ones that go to the Pro Bowl, they have refined route running ability. Operating out of the gun, Flacco flushed to his right. And he's going to get into the end zone for two. And they're back within two scores, down 15 now. Well, it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure. But that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready. Because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. And to give this time to the tailback. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be a third and about 13. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. And the Bengals on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is going to be third and 13. Now a first carry for Giovanni Bernard. And yet again, nowhere to run. 
this time maybe we'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. Here's Kevin Huber now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Joe Flacco and company heading back out onto the field. And he had the touchdown on the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverages last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there. And that'll bring up second down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Second and ten. Flacco once more. He's going to let it fly. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Tried to go for the big one there on second down. Now they're likely down to their final two plays. And you know they've got to keep going for the big shot, right? So defensively, you play what they call top down. Nothing behind you. Make everything get completed in front. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he takes this down deep into Cincinnati territory. They give him a gain of 38. A red zone first down for Flacco. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. I know you felt like saying touchdown there, didn't you, partner? That looked like a sure six points, but the contact jarred it free. Got his hands on it, could not hold on to the end of the play. Now Flacco. And this one is incomplete. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. Just making a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back in the 24. Carlos Dunlap in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. Here we go. Fourth down. Fourth quarter, Flacco. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Bengals are going to win this football game. Well, they had to take one final shot at the end zone, but now things are looking really bleak. And I agree with that totally. You had to take the shot if they did score. You know, whether you call it a miracle or not, you line up, onside kick, get the ball back, throw one more in the end zone, who knows? Had to take the chance, it just was unsuccessful. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. A little bit of great pickup for the offense as they face a second and 11. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain through the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Or are you I, one of those guys a skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of...